Hey, pals, before we get started, want to let you know that we have a newsletter. I know what you're thinking. Newsletter. Ugh. Another one? Another place to give my email address? Trust me, you're going to want this newsletter. For those of you that have been listening to the show for a long time, you know that I used to do a companion show called This Week in Vice when we were doing Miami Vice. This newsletter is essentially that for our movies. So in there is notes about the movie, links to other things to check out, some other articles that talk more about the movie that we had for that podcast episode. It's good use of your time. I'm writing it. I'm not going to send you any other spam or any other information or, or take advantage of you giving us your email address. But if you don't want to do that, you don't want to give it, us your email address, that's totally fine. They will publish the Friday after every movie episode on our website, go with the heat.com. You can go there and you can give it a read. And you know, if you give it a sample read, I bet you you'll subscribe. If you hear something that you hear about a video we referenced from music or specific website that I'm telling you to go buy music on, it'll be in that <laughs> newsletter. And trust me, I am a CEO, CEO of John Jazzy Productions. <laughs> All right, make sure you subscribe to that newsletter. Now on with the show. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movie. That is 1975 to 1995. And I don't know if you classify this movie as the... It exists in the era. <laughs> but I don't know if you can punch, <laughs> chop, or kick about this movie being in the one of the best ones. I think it fits with a lot of the movies that we watch. But I think it's more representative of that genre of B movie, I will say. Yeah, and that's for sure in our discussion about this movie and get to what movie it is in a second i love this movie but i love it for its b movie quality so there's there's a there's a definite difference between alien nation and tango and cash which are fun movies fun action movies big explosions and fight scenes and a bunch of good side actors that are in it those are fun for those reasons this movie is fun because it's so cheesy and corny and just barely off that it makes it fun. It's really funny, and you yes. don't have to pay attention either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very easy to follow. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to be like all into the details. <laughs> details. Who needs that? I mean, I think that might be the same guy twice, but I'm not sure. Let's just see. You know. <laughs> the movie that we are taking a look at this week is Tiger Claws. It originally premiered on July 16th, 1992, which is kind of funny because also listed as a movie that came out in 1991. And I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> I think it has to do with that they released it in a limited run theater, like three theater chain, and then months later released it on VHS and Laserdisc. So, so is it that, one of those things they thought it was going to get picked up? <laughs> and they were like, well, never no. mind. So, I was confused looking at the IMBD because it said that they had apparently spent like two and a half million dollars on this movie. <laughs> but it didn't list what the box office was. But they listed that it was released in Hungary. And I was like, well, why, why would they release it in Hungary? Like, why would that be the place to release this movie? Classic B-movie. Yeah. Where did it get released? <laughs> Hungary. Like, okay, yeah. but why? It got released, didn't it? <laughs> exactly. They released it in Hungary. And then like a couple months later was like, this movie was huge in Hungary. Let's bring it to the States. <laughs> This movie and movies like it, John's going to talk about later, they're designed to be straight to VHS. From the very beginning, this movie was designed to be straight to VHS. In the modern era, this is a straight to Tubi. Not Netflix. They're not good enough for Netflix. No, 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 no. Maybe <laughs> Amazon. I don't know. The I was going to say. I was going to say Amazon is making a ton of movies just like this right now. Yeah. <laughs> so trust me, I've watched a few. To be fair, Netflix, I just watched Dragon Heart Vengeance. <laughs> the other night netflix isn't far far ahead no no it's not because some of the netflix are especially which is funny because it's the netflix original movie you're like wow <laughs> tiger claws is written by j stephen monder no wikipedia so sorry jay we're moving on it is directed <laughs> by kelly macon now he has a little bit of tv chops flashpoint queerest folk vikings a bunch of other stuff that i didn't mark down but the cheesiness and the campiness 
And the weird kind of story that we have going on in Tiger Claws might make sense when you find out that he wrote a bunch of episodes for the kids in the hall. Uh, <laughs> that should have been a warning, I think. <laughs> so let's be real, though. The reason why we chose this movie, A, me and Melissa have seen it before, so we were on the inside track. We got to watch this Tiger Claws. Yeah. <laughs> B, it's the cast. It really is all about the cast in this. Because when you see the cover and you see that bolos in it and then you know some of the other people that are going to be in the movie and you know 80s and 90s action because we gotta give it a shot yeah you got it you have to watch it you have to see what's going to happen and in classic b-movie form what makes these movies so much fun is that they're not by the numbers there's always some twist to it so and, but the twist is awful it doesn't make any sense but it makes <laughs> it fun because there's just like weird quirk in the storyline like you know being able to scratch someone with your tiger claws. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <To death. laughs> Before we get into this rundown, we got to talk about the cast. Because if you watch these kinds of movies, you know who these people are. Now, they may not be the most glamorous people, but you know who they are. You may not want to know who they are, <laughs> but you do. <laughs> John? Jumping into this, the first obvious guest star i have to talk about is cynthia rothrock she plays linda master she is a badass she's known as the queen of martial arts and she made a ton of these b movies i think the pinnacle of them is china o'brien that's kind of the movie that if you want to see cynthia rothrock that's the one you go watch first this is according to her imbd okay so this is her bio from her imbd it says that she is a world champion in martial art f arts forms and weapons. That she was the world champion from 1981 to 85 in martial arts forms and weapons. I don't know if that's one category, several categories. <laughs> she only wanted to do it for five years and then she was going to retire. And so she retired undefeated with over 100 wins. Damn. She holds five black belts with the rank of 8th Dawn Grandmaster. That's more than Steven Seagal, JCVD. <laughs> None of you guys got anything on Cynthia. And she started doing movies in Hong Kong before returning to the States. And she is the first woman to grace the cover of Karate Illustrated. Mm, nice. Yep, in 1983. So yeah, she is a true badass. Uh, something for you guys is that apparently she was the star of No Retreat, No Surrender 2. Oh, really? Yep. Something hmm. we might have to pull out. A movie I want to watch is called <laughs> Sci Fighters with Don Wilson, where Don Wilson has to go and fight in a virtual reality to save his son, and she's in that. So I want to check yes. that out. seen it. Yes, we, we, have, we have watched that one. Amazon. <laughs> it is fantastic. <laughs> yes, okay. All right, I got to check that out. It's fantastic for, I mean, way beyond all the wrong reasons. Also, she's, she is very provocative in that movie. Yeah, Ooh. which is kind of out of character for her. Yeah, because it's a, well, also, she's, it's kind of an older Cynthia, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyways, it's, it's still Dawn the Dragon Wilson. So, set your expectations. Low. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dawn. Not really, though. You're not a good actor. <laughs> no mangoes, though. It is no the mangoes. void okay. of mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> And also emotion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next obvious guest star we got to talk about is Bolo Young, who plays Chong. And I'm not even sure if he's fully aware he's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like he's having a pretty good time on set. Like, I don't know if he knows that they're filming sometimes. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> he thought he was yes. going to paint sets. He didn't know yes. he was in it. <laughs> So he's a bodybuilder, martial artist, and JCVD's mortal enemy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's been training in martial arts since the age of 10. He met Bruce Lee while filming a Winston cigarettes commercial. So Damn. of all things. Yeah, At no. age 10? <laughs> did, well, at age did 10 he was in a cigarette commercial? <laughs> I know. He, he, developed, he developed fast. So, no. <laughs> he actually took the name Bolo because after the commercial, him and Bruce hit it off and he invited him to play a character named Bolo in Enter the Dragon. That was like his first real big role. And then they became good friends and he started making movies. A lot of movies is a lot of these type of movies. For film one, Jalil Murphy's company that we're going to talk about next. The last thing about Bolo is he still looks really good. He still looks like he could kick my ass. And he's 74. Damn. Damn, he's older than I thought he was. 74. Yeah, and he will still, he will destroy you. 
gorilla just rip your arms right out of the socket. He is, I am, I am, without a doubt, he is the scariest five six person in the entire planet. <laughs> he is yoked too, by the way. I mean, yeah, he's I got huge muscles. <laughs> We got to talk about the character Tark Richards, played by Jalil Murphy. He's a producer, director, and writer. He was born in Brazil to Lebanese parents, but moved to Canada to expand his parents' jewelry business. He then, using the money from that jewelry business, basically started his own production company. He was such a fan of movies and martial arts that he decided that, hey, I'm just going to run with it. I'm just going to start making movies. Starts a production company called Film One, and he ends up making a bunch of movies featuring Cynthia Rothrock, a bunch of movies featuring our friend Billy Blanks. Mm -hmm. One on that list that I absolutely have to watch is TC2000. Y'all at home, Uh book that one up. Bolo was another one who who he did a bunch of movies with. He just ran with it, man. You gotta love it. If you want to become an action star and you can afford it, you start your own production company, why not cast yourself as the star? Exactly. Exactly. You see, on his Wikipedia page, someone fills it in. I was feeling it's him. Not based that on any facts. I'm just saying that I have suspicions. Is He's <laughs> listed as the Beirut Steven Seagal. <laughs> So. Okay, so so later in Breakdown, uh, well, when I was watching the movie, I actually li- wrote down that he reminds me of the Lebanese version of Christopher Maloney uh, <laughs> with a ponytail. Yeah, with a so, ponytail. Not quite Seagal, but SVU level. <laughs> I have a different comparison that I'm going to say that makes more sense because he started a production company. He's living the dream, making a bunch of shitty, shitty movies, but living the dream, making it happen, which means that he's the Beirut Tommy Wiseau. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. But we don't know that where Tommy's ton from, more. so <laughs> he may be from Beirut too. He definitely is not from America. <laughs> The only way I can finish guest stars is, well, one, by telling you personally invested two and a half million of you, which is amazing. Um, (laughs) But that by also telling you that nobody else of real consequence is in the movie. There's a couple guys who went on to be stunt guys. Nick Dibley, the guy who plays Psycho Rapist. This was his (laughs) only acting credit with an actual character name. So, and it was, and it was Psycho Rapist. That was the character's (laughs) name. Fern Figueroa plays Linda's partner at the beginning, and he is in nothing that you've ever heard of after this. <laughs> so, and the only other person in this movie that actually went on to do other things is David Stevenson, but we'll talk about him in. <laughs> Perfect. I cannot wait for music. I've had some sneak peeks at music. I cannot wait to talk about music. Well, let's dig into Tiger Claws. Before we get too far into looking at what the music is. Can't wait though. Let's go give a rundown on this movie. Okay guys, listen. Before we get started with our rundown. I want to throw out some spoilers. So warning to anyone listening. The spoiler. If you look this movie up on Amazon. It's really clear who survives in this movie. <laughs> Based off of Tiger Claws 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> yes, yes. Not only that, but like when I was reading about it and when I was first looking it up, I saw the character Psycho Rapist. And so when I first saw the beginning of this movie, I thought, oh, good, movie's over. Because it is in the first like 30 seconds, she, she catches the Psycho Rapist. And so it's like, oh, man, that was a solid five minutes. <laughs> also just observation of new york in the 90s doesn't new york in the 90s look like it's older than new york in the 80s yeah i, I don't think yeah. this is new york in the 90s <laughs> <laughs> i know they did have funding issues that delayed filming from a few scenes so i think there's a jump in time from like one part of the movie to the filming of the rest of the movie but i don't so did know it, if you can did it actually delay the acting too is that why like <laughs> <laughs> we're still waiting <laughs> Because it never came, the acting never came through. So I'm waiting. I'm wondering when that was going to happen. 
other thing, you notice how I'm not talk, talking about the story here. Other <laughs> thing that happened in the opening, there's this great third of a second moment where a cab almost hits a Suburban, and the Suburban's like careening out of control <laughs> through it. <laughs> and that was not part of the filming. No. That was not like a closed set. That was just like New York traffic. That, that and that's was I, just going to crash. <laughs> you know, it, that's one of the things I love about this movie, too, is that they're clearly filming, and sometimes when no one else knows that they're filming because that <laughs> later on we're at a karate tournament. And I think they really went down to a karate tournament and filmed it and just didn't tell anyone. So what you're saying is they pulled a bow finger. Oh my God. This movie's a bow finger. <laughs> it's real it's life a bow finger. <laughs> it's a real life bow finger. <laughs> the first scene of the movie, the opening scene is this guy clumsily following Linda. None of it matters because you're never going to see him again. And all that matters is she makes an arrest and blah, blah, blah. And we get to see her kick someone in the face. None of this open makes, <laughs> means anything for the whole rest of the movie. All it does is set that Linda's a badass. Yeah. Right? That's all that it does. The part of the scene that really made me laugh was that the cop that is her partner that's supposed to be following her so that when the rapist attacks... They are there to help her. Uh -huh. He gets distracted because he's catcalling a woman on the street. Yeah, what a yes. pervert. <laughs> it's so obvious that he's following her, and then he can't even do that right. And it's like, I understand why they didn't even give his character a name at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he's just Linda's partner. And what's great is because we jump to this next scene, and she gets a new partner. And it's like, so what happens to the old partner? Do you just get fired? Do you just tell him, like, all right, go home? <laughs> Because you never see him again. At the end of that scene, she says, I'm tired of tr dressing up like a whore and doing these two-bit arrests. I I'm not done doing this. When she goes to the precinct, Tarek is in the middle of negotiating with someone at a desk that he needs 25000 Otherwise, his undercover deal is going to be blown. And the person on the desk is like, I can do that for you if you take me out to dinner. Yeah, but I don't Sexual understand. harassment works both ways. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> she just looks like a regular like secretary beat cop. So she doesn't have the power. She was just going to use him up. <laughs> <laughs> she was just going to get some sex and then be like, sorry, I couldn't get that 25000 for you. Sorry about that. So, oh, wait, that's a man that would do that. Sorry. That's the other way around. <laughs> so we're already kind of getting a vice wannabe Sonny Crockett vibe a little bit. And I say that because obviously Tarek is the owner of the production company and the star. So obviously he is modeling himself similar to someone who was popular around that time. <laughs> so you might say he's the Beirut Don Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> as well as Steven Seagal. <laughs> At the same time that Tarek is negotiating twenty five grand for dinner, <laughs> Linda is talking to infomercial doctor in hallway <laughs> over <a game. laughs> He's wearing a white lab coat, pulls his glasses off to speak with her so she she can get the report on the body that someone had been killed with martial arts or the martial artist that had been killed. So, and of course, it's the infomercial doctor. So he also suggests that he has the way to cure her diabetes. <laughs> and gingivitis, too. <laughs> <laughs> we jump from that to what is likely the easiest drug bust I've ever seen in the history of <laughs> drug busts that gets interrupted by the two moron cops. It starts with Tarek meeting these guys for this drug deal. One of the guys like pulls out like package of coke and like throws it to him. Everyone's confused what he should do and he kind of does like the taste thing. And he's like, yeah, okay, everyone put your hands on the car. And like everyone's just like, okay, we're gonna do it. The other cops come pulling up. Instead of assisting Tarek, they try to just take it over. Drug dealer takes off running with the drugs. I'm sorry, one of the henchmen from the drug dealers takes off with the drugs. Tarek gives chase, catches him on a bridge, whoops his ass to be able to take the drugs. Meanwhile, Tweedledee and Tweedledum shoot and kill two other guys. But the drug dealer escapes. But Tarek, see, here's the deal. Tarek, fucking great shot. He's a great <laughs> shot. And unfortunate oh, yeah. for this drug dealer, there also happened to be two tons worth of C4. <laughs> at this point. Someone just had some barrels oh, no. of gasoline oh, they were no. storing there. Okay? The barrels had nothing to do with the car exploding. He's such a good shot that the bullet went through the driver and blew the car up. Are you saying he's not? <laughs> He made this movie. He can do whatever he wants. But apparently, despite the drug dealer's hair, Tarek still did wrong. 
<laughs> well, I mean, have you seen his hair? So yeah, he's done wrong. A lot of wrong. Now that we know we're dealing with a super cop, let's talk about Billy Pickles, guys. <laughs> Ah, Billy Pickles. This is... He never had stood a chance with his pickles. He just this didn't. is my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> Billy Pickles is my favorite karate character of all times. Because he's <laughs> he's doing this bit, talking about how you never back down, you never give up, and you fight to the end. And then he immediately gets offset and says, I don't like it, there's plants taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to never shoot me from my, my bad side. <laughs> With that hair, uh -huh. every side is bad, okay? Can that we talk? <laughs> curly mullet wig he had on. <laughs> Can we talk about what he's doing to try and look tough? He is standing on broken glass and stomping on it. And then apparently he was going to cut a watermelon in half without cutting the woman in half, I think. Yep, that's what he did. He or cut is, it right is he supposed to cut the woman in half too? <laughs> <laughs> They see the filming is so bad on this. It's so grainy and the color is so <laughs> off. Like... It kind of looks like he was going to cut a jackfruit in half, <laughs> which would actually be a good job. That, that, that would be I would feat. be impressed if you did yeah. that. Because that then was he cuts a... up, he runs the watermelon, like, <laughs> oh. So you what? just. You're yeah. just a ninja Gallagher. That was a very uh -huh. pale watermelon based off what we saw. <laughs> yes. I thought it was a squash. So yes. I was like, he's going to he's gonna cut a spaghetti squash on this lady. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was a watermelon. But Bill Pickle is the ultimate predator, which is something that he says. <laughs> Who is still pretty and doesn't let anyone push him around. These are real words Came that Bill Pickle said. That's Mr. Pickle to you, okay? <laughs> Put some respect on it. He's Mr. William Pickle. He does not let anyone push him Mr. around. Mr. William Pickle. <laughs> Willie Pickle. <laughs> well, he's not that tough because immediately off camera after the after the commercial, poor Billy Pickles gets murdered by the finger of death. He got fingered. That was it. He was done for. Someone fingered his pickles. <laughs> Zoom in on the TV and cut to the news <laughs> discussing the murder of Mr. Pickle. <laughs> we go over to the precinct and the detective on the death dealer case, when you get the claw, this is the detective. When that's you get the on, finger, <laughs> that is on this they one. call it the death deal. The fingers of death. <laughs> the chief is not happy about that the press knows that it's now the death dealer and it's a serial killer because on the news... That detective is like, it's a serial killer. We call him the death <laughs> dealer. <laughs> He's like, I don't know how it got out. I saw you on the video. I saw you. You got out because you, you said it. <laughs> but don't worry. She's on the case. Linda's coming in and she's got the behind the scenes because she is a martial artist. She has trained her entire life since she was 15. Mm -hmm. In Lancaster, this. Pennsylvania. <laughs> since she was 15. To do this. Yeah, she was 15. <laughs> to do this. So she has some inside knowledge on it. Because she, she just kind of felt like it. <laughs> she just needed something to do. She's so bored. <laughs> She needs to get her Lord. energy out. <laughs> Dad, I don't feel like doing hamster style anymore. Okay. <laughs> we made that joke yesterday, me and him. <laughs> We're like, okay, son. <laughs> <laughs> Linda comes in, demonstrates her karate skills on the detective by punching him in the dick. Okay. <laughs> but why did, she, why did she punch him in the dick and then also the knee? That was just a cheap shot. She was like, in here, here, and here. I never clawed up their dick or their knee. <laughs> but she has a hunch this martial artist that was killed was killed by martial arts. And she needs a martial artist expert to partner with to solve the martial artist it's murder. Too bad that Mr. William Pickles is dead because he, he would have been who she would go to. Mr. Pickles, he would have been the expert, right? Like, he was the next one on the list to be expert. But he's dead now. <laughs> so the chief says, listen, I know this greaseball who you should work with who's currently suspended. So we need to go convince him yeah. to, to work with you. So we're going to go out to Sonny Crockett's boat. And Don't you insult Sonny like that. <laughs> yes. No, he's Sonny freaking Crockett. He drives a car that they gave to him from the police impound and lives on a yacht that was also given to him by the police impound. He's Sonny frickin' Crockett. He even <laughs> woos her the same way that Sonny wooed Gina. But he smells like the Hudson Bay, okay? 
Don Johnson was in Miami. At least he had some good hey. water to be off of. <laughs> Insight into the world of the actor that plays Terry because he produced this movie, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that this is on the level of what he considered himself to be. He gave himself the Don Johnson treatment for his character. Yeah. Also, he's a badass at karate, and he's the ultimate super cop, right? Mm -hmm. So he just took this is where he, what he thinks of himself in all these cases. And then when you read the reviews of the movies yeah. he's been in, they all say the same thing, which is everyone was great except that guy. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> that must have hurt. He sold all his yeah, jewelry and for that, this. That's <laughs> so luckily, by a 100% chance, Linda shows Tarek the photos of the murders. Tarek immediately recognizes the style as Tiger Claw, and he trained in it. As we find out later, he trained with someone in mm -hmm. China for Tiger to, Claw, who knows the person teaching Tiger Claw locally. I mean, just what are the odds that they run yes. into this suspended cop who was trained by the who's training the local Tiger Claws in the Tiger Claw system? What are the odds? That's quite a coincidence. <laughs> Almost <laughs> unbelievable. It's at this point in the movie that I start to question what Tiger Claw actually means. Because they start talking about Tiger Claw ruined my life and took my <laughs> kids and killed my grandfather. <laughs> my wife like, left like, me. Tiger Claw heroin? <laughs> like, what are we talking about? So he agrees he's going to do it, but he's not a cop. He's only an advisor because he's still technically suspended. So he can't do anything. He just has to let Linda. She's in charge. Mm -hmm. That's her case. She's the one that found the link. So it's her thing. Tarek is just an advisor. Now we go over to a real karate dojo where a man is giving a demonstration to his crew i don't think that's a real karate it's, dojo <laughs> i, not, I wouldn't call that real <laughs> when you go into the dojo it's just him doing moves and everyone that goes there watching him which is very much like a show enough moment yes. in the last yeah. dragon where you every time they cut the show enough he's just yes. beating the fuck out of someone <laughs> else in his crew <laughs> he's a very sweaty man also <laughs> his his kimono is just yes. soaking wet. <laughs> <laughs> the leader of this crew is telling his people that it doesn't matter about the moves or the historical significance of the moves, which is what they're questioning about, how about how you look when you do it. If you look cool, that's You're, all that matters. Yeah, in competition, you don't have to worry about the significance. It's just all how you look. That's how you win. And that's how he won. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> so then, of course, later that night, the death dealer is going to give him the claw. He's out there just picking up all his swords by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't use any of them. <laughs> so they say, like, they don't have pick up after themselves? What are they, like, five? <laughs> what kind of dojo is that? He gets murdered by the finger of death as well. <laughs> and I'm starting to wonder if these guys are actual experts. How did the finger of death go through the sword? He has a sword in his hand. He tries to get it. And then you hear, like, the claws of death are going through metal or something. <laughs> and then the sword, is, the sword gets thrown to the side, and then he's dead. He's, he's all scratched up. It's kind of like a bear got him. Not a, not a tiger. <laughs> it's more like a bear. So later when the police come, Linda and Tarek are there doing their investigation, and they state some pretty obvious things here. One. <laughs> he's been scratched up real he's good. He's been scratched up. <laughs> Two. That the killer wants you to know that it's the same killer as the other murders. <laughs> See, he wrote it right there. Same. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a point here that happens in this investigation. They bring up, it will never come up again in the rest of the movie. Linda says there's three things missing so far. A sword, a black belt, and a trophy. And the mystery is, why is the killer taking a symbol per kill? They never address that. Why is the killer taking a symbol per kill? But they only talk about that because at the end, they show the stuff he took at the shrine. Yes, but they never say <laughs> so why he's doing that. Maybe he's not killing experts. Maybe he's just a klepto and he's just <laughs> killing people he's robbing. <laughs> Well, we go to Death Dealer's his shrine that he's got <laughs> underground it's a in the sewers. closet, isn't it? No, <laughs> it's uh, the whole Tiger Claw church that they have in the old theater is very weird because it is like a cult. We see them practice for like two, three minutes at a time, but most of it is just them painting and praying to the Tiger God. <laughs> it's got a good candle setup, though. Like yeah, solid. Oh, yeah. Some fruit. Oh, so he, solid candle <laughs> game. Yeah, just in case he needs a snack, he's got some apples and oranges. He doesn't know he's in a movie, so, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he never knew he was in it. He was like, I brought some fruit. 
I got to do some working out. You know, I got to paint. I'm hungry. I brought myself a snack. Exactly. Jack. And they're exactly. like, by the way, this whole thing's been filmed during a movie. It's like, damn, I didn't even know I was in it. <laughs> That's how Jalil met Bolo. He just followed him around and filmed him for a week. <laughs> no figure. I told you. He didn't even know he was in it. They just filmed him while he was out doing shit. <laughs> Gotcha, suckers. <laughs> Back at Terex, because that's apparently the home base. Even though Linda's in charge, everything's going to happen at Terex. He's boat. got a boat. Hey, he'll, he'll go to. <laughs> yeah. Who wants to go to a plane apartment when you can go to some guy's boat? I mean, come on. I I wouldn't exactly. go there. But that's the like if 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 you had a choice to do the investigation from an office or from a guy's yacht, like I'm choosing the yacht. <laughs> Linda will start going through the phone book, studio by studio, to all the suburban white kid studios throughout the city to go find who's training in Tiger Claw. It's great because it's like, oh no, they're all Taekwondo. I can't find any Tiger Claws anywhere in this. Let's go to Chinatown. <laughs> well, Just is, ask around. That leads to what is single-handedly greatest montage style, which is the wandering New York montage. Yes. Where you just talk yes. to people on the street. You just yes. ask random people about point, something. They Lots point a lot. Yeah, yeah. Lots of like confusion, lots of frustration, hands in the yeah, air. Like, no, like, I don't know anything about this, okay? <laughs> it's, Leave it's me the hell alone. Like, <laughs> it's almost like they just filmed them walking up to random people on the street and asking them for directions. <laughs> They're like, have you seen this dog? No, I haven't seen your dog, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I think Times Square is over there. I'm a tourist. Why are you asking me? <laughs> They finally get a lead on a studio slash mahjong, mahjong yeah, I think so. gambling studio where <laughs> there's one man doing drunken style training to a to a small old timer audience who then goes out in the alley and gets his ass kicked. <laughs> I would say <laughs> you need to get better at it because <laughs> he's getting his ass kicked until they show up and help him. And they help him by beating up the gang. That brings my question. Is hamster style better than tiger style? Because <laughs> Cynthia is clearly better at fighting than they are. Linda is definitely Linda. a better fighter than Tarek. She should have been the one that entered the Tiger Claw studio. 100%. She's way better than him. Yeah, but he already had a Tiger Claw addiction. And so, I mean, <laughs> that's a hell of a rehab to have to go through. He didn't want her to have to go through that. <laughs> Now, luckily for the drunken style guy getting jumped out in the parking lot, that Linda w took off her heels and switched to regular tennis shoes. And she also... And was wearing her jeggings. I mean, <laughs> have you ever tried to do karate in real jeans? Those suckers will just rip right open. Her heels? Forget it. Also, she's short, but he's also really short. So I would imagine that Jaleel was like, listen, you can't be wearing heels on the set. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm a short man and I may be wearing a wig. So I don't I don't want you to overstep on me. <laughs> I got a question, guys. Why did they have a jump rope with them? Because she like literally beats up the last guy with a jump rope. Why? <laughs> I, I, I don't even understand that one. <laughs> That's what she carries around in her pocket to help her fight people. So she can strangle people with a jump rope. <laughs> Drunken style man says, thank you. By the way, if you want to train Tiger, you need to go down to this karate tournament that's happening at the convention center oh. and look for Sifu Chow. He's got two no, scratches no. on his cheek. <laughs> exactly. It's even better than that. He's, well, since you helped me, let me explain everything yes. that you guys, <laughs> you're looking for a guy with scars on two cheeks. This is his name. This is his social security number. <laughs> and if you're hurry, he's waiting on this corner right now. First, he's like, no, I'm not going to talk to you. And then, he's, okay, you guys help me. So here you go. <laughs> go down, knock on the third door on the left and say, I want the guy with the two scratches on his cheek. <laughs> so now let's go to an actual karate tournament with little kids running around doing karate. And no one knows that they're filming a movie, I don't think, because they're clearly <laughs> still... It's a tournament. There's scoreboards. There's no way these guys are all extras or anything. Yeah, they, there's a lot of people there. I think you're right. This is a real karate convention that was happening in New York. And they just went down there to film a couple scenes with this guy, John. There's Wink. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, he has a good fight. Oh, man. Tarek gets to kind of root him on. I'm excited. You know? <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. I like this character. This guy is a really nice guy. Yeah, he is. He's really what, nice. What, what is... Why I don't understand why he kills kill him. him. Yeah, I don't get that one either. I think it's just because he won. The, he 
spoiler, he wins the whole tournament. Go he ahead, also Ron. got kicked in the nuts by that guy. <laughs> he talks to his buddy. They also run into Sifu Chow. He tries to talk to him, but I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do this tiger. He's talking about John and the other guy. He goes, these are good fighters, huh? And he's like, why do you think they're good? <laughs> because I don't. <laughs> you obviously don't know anything about anything. Clearly, um, I'm if leaving. If you fought tiger and you think these people are good, don't talk to me anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. But they're able to get his license plate number and figure out where he goes. His social security number. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to get restless at this point because I was and I want to see more Cynthia. I'm, I'm getting a little sick of all this Tarek stuff. Well, Tarek wants to just run right into the abandoned theater slash tiger training facility. Slash dojo. Slash. <laughs> <laughs> but Linda says, absolutely not. This is my investigation. We're just going to sit here and watch and take pictures of everyone. They're there all day. They sit outside. Everyone comes out at night. Eventually, they get pictures of everyone coming out. But meanwhile, John is getting clawed <laughs> at the hotel. <laughs> Sorry, John. You're clawed. <laughs> I'll teach you to get <sighs> hotel ice. <laughs> no, man, no more mustache, right? <laughs> he just claws them up real easy, too. No, he fights back. He fought back more than the guy with the sword. But then he just hits him in the chest like, eh. And he's like, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, Tarek is being attacked by a bee, I think. <laughs> He got a bee in his bonnet. <laughs> this is another one of those moments, though. We have a quick scene where we see the death dealer doing some sick moves in his shrine closet. And then at the hotel, Linda is sees the body and then Tarek comes over and sees it. And there's zero emotion. He's like, oh, no. Oh, from Tarek. And then they cut to him where he's hands on the police car. And he's trying really hard to emote. But just nothing is coming out. <laughs> Damn this robot brain. <laughs> I can't do both. He says he's done waiting for Linda. He's got to go do his own thing. Fault. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> he's taking this investigation in his own hands, which means he needs to go do some sick karate moves out at the beach. Well, where else do you do karate moves? You can't just do them in the street. Have you guys never seen any of these movies? Yeah, but he's breaking the ultimate rule. He's not doing it on a rooftop. He's doing it actually <laughs> on the beach. Yeah, rooftops are where those girls dance terribly, so no. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's being attacked by bees. Beach bees. <laughs> the thing. Linda shows up and graciously gives him one day off to mourn the death of his friend. <laughs> Gracious is anything, okay? <laughs> Which Tarek then goes, damn not swimming water. Take down this side. I want to swim. Why won't you let me swim? Tarek's also a man of action, so he uses his one day off to trespass at the Church of the Tiger. Gets attacked, able to defend himself. Sifu Chow comes over and says, stop, what's going on here? He's like, I want to learn how to do tiger. Like, we don't take newbies. Get out of here, Rook. We're not taking you on. And he says, no, wait. I knew Sifu Ho Chang, who trained me to do tiger a while back. And then Sifu Chow goes... Well, I owe him. I was I, very sad that he died. I owe him, so I will train you out of respect for him. A coincidence. Uh -huh. No, he didn't know he was dead, though. He said, he said like, oh, I used to train with him back in China. He said, well, he's dead now. Terry <laughs> 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 said, well, he's dead now. He's like, well, out of respect for my old friend, I will train you, even though I hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the scene is great because he basically fires the doorman, like <laughs> walks away all pissed off, and he even tries to flex on, on Bolo, who's just there kind of chilling and painting his shit, you know? He's just <laughs> relaxing and painting. He kind of snickers at him. He thinks the whole thing's hilarious. It has no a, idea he's being filmed. It's another reason to suggest it. Chong or Bolo Young didn't know what was happening. No, he thought he was <laughs> painting just, the scenery. He's got okay. funny happened. <laughs> they got it. Yeah. <laughs> he's got like his reading glasses on yeah. too, and he's painting. My favorite thing about this whole movie is that they try to make Bolo look like a nerd. They're like, look, he's just a nerd with glasses and his little sweat. He wears like kind of kind of dirty sweat. He's over there. Look at him. He's just a janitor with his little glasses pulled down. He's so, he's so dorky. He couldn't be the killer. He's so nerdy. Like, what? <laughs> Takes off his shirt. Well, there's that ripped. moment, too, because the guy who they ultimately arrest, mm -hmm. they think he's the killer. Yeah. And he's over there bullying. And Chong is, like, going along with it, right? He's like, ha, 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 I'm such a dork. Look at me. But he likes those naked women. <laughs> <laughs> we have another Miami Vice moment where Tarek goes in and tells the chief that he's got on the inside of this gang and she was like what are you talking about you're not even supposed to be out doing this stuff linda covers for him 
no, this is the what we tubs. agreed on. You mean we, tubs. <laughs> yeah, we, we think this is a good idea. Yeah. The chief then... is so bad at acting, too. He's so <laughs> terrible. God. He's bad. He's real bad. He's like yelling. He like yells at the top what? of his lungs and just points yeah. in directions. They're not even near anything. <laughs> yeah. What I thought I told you not to do that anymore. <laughs> oh, God. It was so bad. And so after this encounter, they're tired. They decide they want to have some dinner. He's going to take Linda out for pasta. And so in the end up, he ends up cooking pasta for her on his boat. And I'm telling you, it's the same way Sonny Bone Gina on Vice. Like, he's going <laughs> to give her some pasta, give her some wine, no, tell her the made... sob story about how Tiger Claw ruined his life. He made the ultimate poor decision, the bad choice. Pasta? Feeding her pasta. She, he probably even made manicotti. <laughs> Huge mistake. She's so sleepy now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And excuse me, but (laughs) Sonny would not make you pasta. He would make you a lobster that he freshly caught or something. (laughs) Alligator. Yeah, alligator. No. what happened to alligator. No. (laughs) He didn't make no stupid pasta. (laughs) Then there's also the great conversation, which is, I was addicted to tiger claw. That's why my wife left me. She's like, oh, that's why your wife left you? What? (laughs) What the hell is going (laughs) on? Were you trying to yes. tiger claw other women? <laughs> <laughs> it got so bad, I sold all of my stuff for more tiger claw. He's like, I came to New York to forget. So you can't wait a second here. You came to New York to be an undercover narcotics detective to forget that you knew tiger claw? Like, what? <laughs> it makes zero sense. So now Tarek's going to start his actual tiger training. He gets wired up before he goes that way. Linda can listen to all the. Uh, 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 <laughs> She's like, I couldn't and, understand what the hell was going on in there. There's a lot of grunts, and I don't know. Your belly was and, making all kinds of weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> and his first practice is, is ridiculous, too, because he comes in. He, like, does a show to show, like, oh, how bad ass he is at Tiger Claw. And then they practice for, like, two minutes. And then it's, all right, next week, guys. I'm going to really train you. That's it. Like five minutes. He has to prove his worthiness by defending himself against the entire dojo. But first, he's got to put his hands in some hot, a hot walk full of water (laughs) with rusty chains. Or I don't know what's going on in that hot walk. (laughs) Back at Terex, he's recovering. He's drinking some tea. He gives some tea to Linda. She says she likes the tea. She doesn't like that tea. I saw her face. She didn't like like that tea. Vigilantes are roaming the streets looking for the killer. They gotta move fast. Look, this is getting real serious out there. Roaming gangs wearing shoulder pads are out there (laughs) taking control of the streets. Back at tiger training, Tarek is practicing. Guys, guys, hold the phone, okay? I am sitting here, and I, I when we do these podcasts, I normally let the movie run in the background. And so the credits have just started to roll. And there is really also starring... Bill Pickles. <laughs> that is, is his actual guy? name. He's a real person, I think. Because it is literally, he's listed here, also starring Mo Chow, Bill Pickles, Ho oh my Chow, God. and John Mr. Atkinson. Mr. Pickles is real. He's real, guys. <laughs> Mr. Williams, I'm looking him up right now. Back at Tiger Training, Jarek is practicing. Sign's going to be different. He's going to have to battle one person. Death Dealer over there looking cute, doing his painting. <laughs> you know, he's doing all yeah, right. Just laughing and painting away, having a ball. <laughs> hey, guys, when do you think they learn how to play the drums? Because that seems to be a big part of this Tiger religion. That guy is an awesome drummer. He's got so much endurance all night. Doom, 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 doom. Never stops. Oh, yeah. Just keeps going. <laughs> just uh, all night. Then they go in the locker room, and Dude and Chong say, hey, we're going out to another Tiger Club. You want to come with us? He's like, yeah, I want to go to another Tiger Club. Let's go. Well, it turns out it's not an actual Tiger Club, but there is a lot of pussy there. (laughs) Also. And tail, too. Tail, (laughs) yes. And that Tarek has his hair down. Oh, my God, it's awful. He looks like a PTA bomb. It's awful. (laughs) That makes this scene so great is that Chong is in his sweats. He's in his sweatpants and his sweatshirt. Yes. See, Chong thinks that they just took him to a strip club. He has no idea he's on film. That's why he's so confused during the fighting part. Because he's like, what the hell's going? Can you imagine so, taking a bullet for being a strip club bouncer? No. 
Not at all. Guys, oh my god, when that first scene happened, too, I didn't realize he was the bouncer, and he has longer, fuller hair than Tarek does, and I was like, how did Tarek's hair get so long and full? <laughs> like, how much time has passed? <laughs> What kind of shampoo is he using? <laughs> Tarek needs to use that kind. He needs to ask that guy. So, you know? <laughs> maybe this was never explained. Maybe it was. Why the hell was that gang t- shooting up the strip club? I don't know. They never asked. Did they ask for money? No. They asked for the owner. That was it. They wanted to see the owner. And the owner was that old man who was hiding in that yes. getaway thing. <laughs> <laughs> and what does he have to do with anything? I mean, those Nothing. guys were just hanging out there waiting to see boobies. And then random guys start shooting up the place. Yeah, a coincidence. How can it be that one of the, the gang is the gang that was jumping drunken karate guy in the beginning? And he recognizes Tarek as being a cop, but says it in Chinese. And so Tarek doesn't understand what he says, but Chong does. Uh-huh. And he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> and Chong does nothing about it. <laughs> Not involved in this movie. I'm just... <laughs> Yeah, Bolo. Okay. <laughs> Bolo thought Jalil was taking him to a strip club, and then all of this fuss starts happening. He was—he's just there for the buffet. <laughs> and you know he's like, ah, shucks. I was gonna paint those titties at home later, but now I don't remember what they look like. <laughs> Hey, listen, the buffet thing's real. If you've ever been to a strip club in Portland, Oregon, you know what we're talking about. Uh-huh. You, go to, you, you gotta you've go to the buffet. To, you've been to a hey. strip club, you pervert. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's great is sometimes those buffets are better than the actual girls. Uh, like, sometimes it's like, like I don't really care what's going on on stage, but they got this vegan buffet bar. Got great ribs. <laughs> I go for the ribs. <laughs> So now Linda thinks she knows who it is that's doing the killing. So she's going to go down to this pool hall where Wong works. He like, plays pool there, but then also works there occasionally. And she goes there not with Tarek, but instead with Officer King, who is suspiciously similar to the drug dealer <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. But, but, but how could it be? He exploded. <laughs> died in a fiery ball of flame <laughs> so but yet it's real still quick, the same guy with a different hairstyle before cynthia goes down to the pool hall and starts beating ass she's at the strip club and tark tells her that he's drunk on tiger yeah, and yeah, almost couldn't stop scene. himself yes so the tiger addiction is having an effect so okay so fast forward <laughs> cynthia's at the pool hall she's kicking some ass and irish cop is supposed to be waiting out back he fucks it up gets captured <laughs> The big point that I want to take away in this moment is that, remember, Tarek fought Wong at Tiger Claw for the second night that he was there. It was kind of a 50-50 battle. Tarek ends up getting ahead a little bit before Sifu Chang mm-hmm. stops it. Yeah. But for the record, Linda whoops his ass out yeah, in that she, alley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she just mops oh, yeah. the floor with him. <laughs> So, again, how good is actual Tiger Claw style? Because they just keep getting their asses whooped. You know, she's from Pennsylvania, rocking hamster style, and she's just knocking <laughs> dudes out. I think the point of this is it's not necessarily that it's the Claw style. I think it's Tarek. I think he's not that good. <laughs> I don't think he's got any belts anywhere. <laughs> they got Wong. They're going to interrogate him. He won't give anything up because Linda's a terrible interrogator. <laughs> Just tell me yes. the truth. <laughs> so much so that Jalil is like, screw my cover. I'll talk to him. Goes in. Wong's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then he tries to bully him. Says, I was working there. I was covering for a friend. That's why you didn't see me signed in. You saw my friends signed in, but it was actually me working. I have at least 20 witnesses. So now they fucked up. They, yeah, they arrested the wrong up. person. The chief tells them that the commissioner wants them off the case. That Tweedledee and Tweedledum are going to be put on it now. <laughs> and then there's some hazing as they leave as the Tweedledee tells Tarek that he's a loser and he should be off the case. And that and... guy has worse hair than him. How is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> he has leave it to beaver hair. If this is the 90s. <laughs> Those guys are just just awful and and then we jump from that and we go back to the church of the tiger where the sensei basically calls out chong hey you're lazy why don't you ever practice this oh is my, my second favorite oh my God, scene in this the movie scene is amazing <laughs> chong is just doing his thing looking like a nerd doing the painting <laughs> mopping the floors and the leader comes up and says you need to practice Chong says, I don't need to practice. Trust me, I'm fine. He says, no, you're getting lazy. Get a little bigger on the midsection. 
<laughs> you might want to you might want to start practicing here. Uh, Chong's like, okay, fine. So they sit across from each other. Crisscross on... applesauce. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing hand slapping battles while they're sitting down, and it goes too far. Okay, because <laughs> he claws the leader in the face, and the leader gets him, slaps him back, and then somehow Chong kicks him with his little foot <laughs> while they're sitting crossing it only about 18 inches apart. I say little foot because it's clearly a fake foot. It's like someone's hand, someone's hand in a shoe <laughs> slapped him across the face. Polo is actually a Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his Muppet leg kicking him. <laughs> He goes down though. When he gets kicked, he goes down like he got hit by a brick or something. Basically, goes finger of death on him. He's clearly gonna blow his own cover. This is clearly the end game. Then more students come in, see what happened. That Chong killed their sensei, and they try to attack him. He easily kills all of it's them. It's a massacre. <laughs> He fingers so again, the whole is, group, and that's it. Is <laughs> is Tiger Claw actually that good? Because everyone is just terrible at this Tiger Claw stuff. It's also kind of like they're just lining up to be killed, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're all like, wait, why are they all like waiting their turns to fight him? Have you ever heard of like a double team? He just murdered your sensei. This is yeah. like no Lego Ninjago. They would have taken him. Yeah, so the next scene is they're on the boat, and that's when Linda and Tarek, or Linda discovers that in the translation that his cover was blown to Chong, mm -hmm. and that's why they arrested the wrong person. I don't get how wait, they wait. got to that, though. She figures out, so for one, I don't know how they got a translation of what dude said in Chinese when Tarek was there, unless Tarek somehow remembered what exactly what he said and repeated it, even though he doesn't speak Chinese. I also thought that he blew his cover when, you know, he went into the interrogation room and showed that he was a cop to the guy who's in the club. Wouldn't that be more obvious to them? It means blowing his cover all over the place. Only thing that it leads to is that they now know that it's Chong because Chong was the only one that overheard that so that must be who the killer is maybe he saw him when he pulled his badge out at the strip club after the fight that might have <laughs> gave it away i don't know meanwhile chong is busy trying to deep fry himself oh yeah he's <laughs> popping apples and making applesauce he's <laughs> praying to the almighty tiger he's just <laughs> having a ball <laughs> Linda stumbles on the Death Dealer Shrine while Tarek finds the murder scene downstairs. Those three people that also got killed along with the leader. John catches Linda at the shrine. They fight. She intentionally destroys his shrine, which is kind of a dick move. <laughs> I mean, he had to kill Bill Pickles for his stuff and then the other guy for his stuff. <laughs> he had all this stuff. Didn't make any sense why he had it, but he had all I of know. it. Why did he have it? <laughs> they were sacrifices to the Tiger God. They sword fight. Linda loses. Chong decides to not kill her and said throws his sword. This comes up again later in the in the final final scene where he won't fight on an uneven playing field. I think he wouldn't kill her because she was a woman. <laughs> I think he's just effing around the whole time because we literally go from there. Chong gets away. The cops see Tarek and think it's him, the two Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They go to try and arrest Tarek and Chong has sought out Tark and Linda to finish the fight. He has nothing else going on. Like, he clearly just doesn't give a fuck anymore. Because, no. like, he's just... This ending fits perfectly for the movie because Chong shows up to finish the job. He kicks Tweedledee into the water, who apparently can't swim. And, and just, so it's best for him is just stay in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Tweedledee, I'm like, Goes and hides. <laughs> he's got her handcuffed or something. Oh no, him handcuffed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's got Tarek yeah. in handcuffs. He's trying, busy trying to get Tarek out of the handcuffs. Linda's fighting with Chong. Battle's going is about even. No one's really getting the upper hand. And then Chong decides to just book it. <laughs> Why did you come to fight them if you're just gonna run off? <laughs> I don't know. And then he randomly kills cop glasses cop just for the fuck of it. Like, ah, ah, die. Climbs and then runs up in the warehouse. <laughs> the movie must have been about 10 minutes short because this scene shouldn't have existed. No. Nope. And then on top of that, there's all the slow mo in the fighting. Tarek goes chasing after Chong. And the whole time I'm thinking, oh, please, God, let him break his handcuffs. Like, just rip his handcuffs apart. Because, like, that'd be total badass Sonny Crockett deal. 
I was not prepared for the twist. Him catching Chong and Chong going, I'm going to even the fight by tying my hands up. And now we're going <laughs> to fight with both of our hands tied up. That's a great move. Like, I was not <laughs> expecting that at all. <laughs> Then Chong starts to lose, so he unties his hands. That way he's got the advantage. Then Tarek starts to choke out Chong. Chong is actually the one that rips the handcuffs apart. A little bit more fighting, but Tarek stops himself from killing Chong because Chong's just sleeping like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's so tired. He's had a busy day. He's killed like six people. God knows he can't drive. He had to probably walk all the way across town to the marina to then fight him again. <laughs> now he's got to go and he's got to be processed and arrest. They do the, the sequel look where he does the evil freeze frame look. And then we get the very last moment of Linda and Jalil on his yacht. Well, yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, there was never any indication that they were going to be a couple in that whole movie. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for the story continuity, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Tiger Claw. Tiger Claws. And reminder, they made two more of these movies. And Tarek and technically Cynthia Rothrock are in all three. Now, there's some controversy around number three. I mean, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but if you want to look up the storyline on that one, it goes it goes off the rails. And I mean off the rails, like spiritually. Yes. Imagine No Retreat, No Surrender, where ghosts become part of the story. Hey, yeah. don't spoil number two. I want to watch that. Yeah. No, no, no. no number no. two is good. This apparently. is number three. So I want you to imagine that there's that there's ghosts, that one character doesn't survive it, Mm-hmm. And there's a Dallas ending. Yep. And Bolo's not in the third one, for the record. Well, we could go straight into our final thoughts here because I think the final thoughts are going to be short. But I want to get to the music because I've been waiting, Chomping. patiently Chomping waiting a bit. <laughs> for the music. So let's go talk about the music. All right, John, you sent me some notes. I got to peek at a few people. That's why I'm so excited about this music. What do you got for us this week? Okay, so the stuff that I sent you, I'm going to get to them next. First, let's <laughs> talk about Tiger Spirit. So there's only two songs, by the way. Only two songs. So this is going to be a little shorter music, but the, trust me, it's worth it. So Tiger Spirit was written by Harvey, Rossetto, and Stevenson. Now, those are only last names. They don't tell us a whole <laughs> lot about who wrote it. But it was also produced by David Stevenson. So Tiger Spirit is kind of the electronica music in the at the end and in the background sometimes. Oh, okay. David Stevenson, who produced it and made the electronica music for the movie, also played Sifu Harris in the movie. Sifu Harris? Who the hell Sifu, is this? I'm not 100% positive, but I believe Sifu Harris is the Billy Blanks wannabe guy that gets killed oh, earlier in man. the movie. Oh, man. Uh -huh. I think that's him. So, it's but that's either David him or Stevenson. the first guy that dies. We don't see the first guy that died, so mm -hmm. it might be him too. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I've seen a picture of David Stevenson. Let me just say, I think it's the Billy Blinks looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. But he was also in a, a bunch of other film one stuff. So he pretty much got his start in the industry from Jalil and from this movie with a big martial arts guy. And he actually ended up doing stunt work for 25 film credit. And mm. some actually pretty big movies like Jason X, Down to Earth, the X-Men movie, the original X-Men movie, Blues Brothers 2000s, Cool Runnings, Patriot Games, and some other movies. So he's actually been in some big, pretty decent sized movies as a stunt double. He is also a musician and a choreographer. He also wrote a book called Dangerous Days which he says displays his passion for martial arts. So the reason why I say he says is because his LinkedIn is exact same as his IMBD bio. Copy and pasted it. That's all he did. <laughs> so, and his LinkedIn says that he is also in production on a film called Lockdown, which is also a, a martial arts movie. He is also the CEO of DS Production. He has been the CEO of DS Production since June of 1973, which Damn. is 48 years, which took me a minute to realize what he is talking about is he is the CEO of D, as in David, 
S. Stevenson production, who was born June of 73. But that's basically <laughs> as long as he's been alive. That's why he's been the CEO. So, that's but that, that, that's LinkedIn for you. That's great. <laughs> that's a great way to do it. I never thought about that. I've been the CEO of John for 35 years now. <laughs> I also saw a LinkedIn that said he was the owner of Central Stage Entertainment in South Florida. That said that he's been an owner there since 92, which would have been around the time of this movie. And if that's true, that means he's owned it for 29 years. And based on their website, I think good for him because it looks like a solid company. I nice. couldn't verify that because there's nothing on any of the websites that show that he's the owner. But it's the kind of place where it's like you can have a bar mitzvah there. And you, they have, like, professional actors come in as characters, Marvel characters oh, and okay. stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, So it's actually a pretty legit company in South Florida. Yeah, so, but I couldn't find anything that definitively said he owned it, but except for the LinkedIn. So if he is, good for him, man. Good for you. You're doing good, <laughs> David. Obviously, his music career did not take off, but hopefully books will do better for him. So, by the way, Dom, I know you like those types of books. Dangerous Days might be right up your alley. I'm so. listening. I'm listening. Now, let's talk about the other band. The other song is Break the Walls Down, which was written by St. James slash Taylor. I don't know who those guys are. But it was performed <laughs> by Attitude. And Attitude is a thrash metal band from Oakland. Oaktown represent. Oh, really? Oakland, California. They were a thrash metal band during the thrash metal era of the Bay. During the Metallica late 80s, early 90s. Obviously, they didn't make it huge, but a bunch of other bands did. Attitude, according to MetalArchives.com, circa 2002, <laughs> which means I would have still been in high school. But according to them, Attitude, formerly condemned Attitude, and before <laughs> that, uh, formed from Attitude Adjustment, <laughs> uh, we have Attitude, which is bassist Rick Strahl, guitarist Ron Shipes and Chris Scaparo, and Andy Airborne Anderson on vocal, with Eric Bretsch on drum. Now, Attitude Adjustment, the former band that was Attitude was made out of, one of the founders of that band, Chris Contes, instead of joining Attitude, become a former founding member of the band Machine Head. Oh, he would be really? their Machine Head's original drummer on their first album. Attitude Adjustment has actually got this cult following because they're kind of the preview before Machine Head. Now, all of the guys who joined Machine Head are none of the guys who built Attitude, who became 2-Bit Thief from 89 to 95 and released three albums. So the people who didn't make it famous became a band called 2-Bit Thief, and they released three albums, and that's about all that was said of their music careers. Those albums were Another Sad Story in the Big City, Gangster Rubble Pop in 93, and one more for the road in 95. Now, I, I bring that up because literally the entire band of Attitude became 2-Bit Thief. But they all apparently met at the same record store in Walnut Creek, California called the Record Exchange. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. So Rick Stroll from Germany met Anthony Anderson, Airborne Anderson, and all the other guys, and they became a band. Where are they now? So obviously Chris Contes started Machine Head. Eventually he'd leave that band, and apparently eventually Attitude Adjustment would get back together. Minus all of the members from Attitude. Andy Airborne Anderson does comedy, or at least tried to do comedy. <laughs> apparently he had a comedy strip called Recess in about 2010, but it got canceled. So I haven't been able to find anything else since then. Chris Caparo, he's a family man in Oakland, but Rick Strahl is a computer whiz, I guess a Microsoft, former Microsoft guru. I guess he was always kind of a computer whiz, but I guess he went on to do a bunch of stuff, make a bunch of stuff for Microsoft, and now he's some kind of tech guy he's a verified on twitter he's got like eighteen thousand followers and has some tech coding blog nowadays and nowhere in his bio does it mention anything about attitude or attitude adjustment i've seen a couple things where he talks about being in a band back in the day but absolutely nothing mentioning attitude or having a <laughs> song in a movie so by the <laughs> way break the wall sound did not make any of those three albums by two-bit thief 
Not a single one. In fact, I don't <laughs> even think it made any of the Attitude albums. There you go. We have a Walnut Creek sighting, which is you guys lived there at one point. We have a Bay Area band reference, a Machine Head reference, and then we have a tech guy who's into all that tech, same tech stuff that you are. I did do some reading up on that guy, and I'm following him now on Twitter. Like, he's <laughs> he's a tech guy. For you out there, if you're looking for someone who does, like, IIS.net backend systems that builds uh, Vue.js and uh, React front-end development for those backend systems, he's your guy. He knows what he's talking about. You know, it's a little legacy stuff. You would have gotten in. Hey, it's all hey. Windows Server stuff that's based back in like the mid '90s. That's what clearly when he learned. So he still builds stuff on top of Windows Server. I'd like to see him. You know, do a little Linux stuff. Get into the Linux <laughs> side, but Break it's cool. Out, you, you do your thing. Hey, now that you follow him, send him that video of Attitude playing. It's literally <laughs> the only video that exists left on the internet. Send it to him. <laughs> I, I, I want to see how he reacts to it. I don't think he knows that anyone has any of that left i wonder what by the happen. way if you are out there and you are in my music i will find that video like trust <laughs> me if you have that embarrassing video and you're in my music i will find you <laughs> i wonder what he's gonna do when i messaged him like listen we did a podcast episode about tiger claws and we learned about you what do you have to say to yourself? <laughs> all right let's go give our final thoughts on this one all right john i want you to go first on your final thoughts on this that way the Two people who have seen it already will go after you for coming into it being the newbie. What are your final thoughts on Tiger Claws? I was expecting Bolo and Cynthia to be the duo to fit with our theme. I wasn't expecting Jalil and Cynthia to be our partners, but I'm not disappointed. I almost, <laughs> I think I almost enjoyed it more because of that. I, I enjoyed the fact that Bolo felt like he didn't even know he was on film. <laughs> like he was just screwing around the whole time. It also really fit with the movies we watch. I was saying it really felt like doing a Vice episode, almost. And not just because Tarek clearly tried to model himself after Sonny Crockett, but because it had the same kind of fun hijinks a little bit, mixed in with the karate and the loose plot police work of that 90s style. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was one of those so bad it's good movies that really fits with the style that we like. And Cynthia's really a badass. The only thing I wish, I wish I would have got more Cynthia as the main character and less Jalil. So obviously it's his company, it's his movie, it's his yacht. So he makes the <laughs> rules. I would have liked to see more, a little bit more heavier on her. Other than that, I enjoyed it. Even with the music only being two songs, I felt like it was more fun than when it's music that is... Uh, Bands that we've heard of that I have to do a lot. I never want to talk about Peter Gabriel again. So I will I will gladly talk about Andy Airborne Anderson and his comic strip recess. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now, is it going to be my favorite movie of this season? Uh, probably not. But it's definitely not going to be my least favorite. I know that. <laughs> Tough and deadly. Glow Tough glowing and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Like the acting is is not great, but it is not the worst acting that we've had on this podcast. Joey Harden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All I was thinking about was screw you, deadly bet. <laughs> Melissa, what are your final thoughts? Uh, I like this movie. It's fun. It's so fun. Also, he's annoying, but <laughs> <laughs> I really like her. I think she's, I love seeing her be a badass and kick people's ass and everyone's trying to treat her like she's like, oh, well, I have to help her when she doesn't need any help. She could have done it all her own. She probably could have tracked him down and then beat him at Tiger Claw all by herself without <laughs> any help. But yeah, it's a fun movie. It, it goes with the movies that we watch for fun. So I enjoy that where it doesn't feel like I'm trying to watch something that I don't really like. So they, I'm just trying to go along with it just to watch it. It was fun. It's got a lot of silliness, and that's what was lacking last week was the silliness. So this <laughs> this filled in for it. <laughs> and bad hair, lots of bad hair, lots and lots of bad oh, hair. Oh yeah, that that strip club bouncer man, he had that flow like that was incredible. <laughs> I agree with both of you. This is a fun movie, and this is what's missing from current like the by the numbers action movies because what makes it different is when it's not by the numbers that you add in these little tweaks that make it so that it's unique tiger claws as a style is unique and it no matter how goofy it is right it adds this new yep. layer other than just 
I'm Scott Atkins, and I can kick you. Like, that's, that's <laughs> these little tweaks when it comes to these movies that are the straight to VHS karate movies, they're what makes this. And these are the types of movies, and you two are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. These are the exact types of movies that when you were up late and you were watching USA Up All Night and Tiger Claws came on, you were like, you know what? That was really good. I gotta go uh-huh. down and go find the VHS of this one. Exactly. This wasn't no Bikini mm-hmm. Car Wash I was Nine. Say, then after that comes on Bikini Car Wash Number Seven. <laughs> yes, yes. It's good enough that I'm like, I want to watch the second one, no, yeah. knowing that all three of them are going to be in it again. Like, I want to, I want to watch the second one. It takes place in San Francisco. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> but it's fun. It's goofy. It's campy. Rips off a whole bunch of other things. That, <laughs> this is what the story. This is what makes these campy B movies fun. I really enjoyed Tiger Claws. I enjoyed it so much I watched it twice. Yeah, we watched it twice. <laughs> I own it. I bought this shit on Amazon. The strongest thing that I'll agree with you two on is that Cynthia Rothrock is a badass. And one of the things that's missing from our podcast was Cynthia Rothrock. And I'm very happy that we were able to fix that problem. That we finally got a Cynthia Rothrock movie in one of our seasons. Trust me, there will be more in the future because... We're all in agreement here that Cynthia Rothrock is where it's at. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this probably longer than normal episode. <laughs> we would love to hear from you. Email us, heat at gmail.com. Get on that website, GoWithTheHeat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, all the ways to give us money. Did you know that you could give us money on our website, PayPal, Square, Patreon? There's all kinds of ways to be able to give us money. I mean, it's borderline putting our shipping address on there because we ain't got no catalytic converters yet. Mr. Uh, Pickles Nickels. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys start giving us money, we'll start making Bill Pickles Karate School shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Mr. William Pickles to you. <laughs> <laughs> So go to that website, find all the ways to contact us. We would love to hear from you on this movie because it does have an eclectic mix of actors in this. And it's it's kind of a cult movie. So we'd love to hear from you on this movie and what you think about it. But also love to hear what you think about Cynthia Rothrock movies. What are some of the other recommendations to get into Cynthia Rothrock? If someone was to ask you, name your top three Cynthia Rothrock movies, what would you tell them? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Email us, go at the heat at gmail.com. There are the ways that you can support us to leave us a review on your podcast catch your platform of choice if you have an iphone or an ipad i don't know someone's logging to their itunes account go on that account and give us five stars no one's gonna know that i told you to give them five stars your sister's not gonna know that it was you that logged in and gave us five stars either <laughs> trust me you'll be able to get in and just give us five stars then in the review break down would hamster style or tiger claw style win in the ultimate showdown break it all down in fact extra points if you work in Chota Boy, okay? <laughs> or, or include your favorite Condemned Attitude song. Leave us a review on your podcast, your platform of choice. We would love to see those. That always helps us. It helps people find the show. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal. I give myself a nickname like that I something like you. airborne <laughs> john jazzy corvo <laughs> that's it we're using that from now on you gotta you gotta sign on as that let's john jazzy yes. corvo <laughs> john jazzy corvo <laughs> yo that's making it into the final cut by the way <laughs> yeah i know i regretted saying it too as soon as i said oh man I should have come up with a better nickname.